Hello friends, it's Cindy Brumbaugh from CindyLeeBDesigns.com, independent stamping up demonstrator. I've got a fun summer card for you. We're all eager for summer in the beaches, so we're going to be using the Seaside Notion stamp set. This one is current right now, and it will be carrying over into the new catalog for 2020 and 2021. So we're going to be using a technique on here. You can see the sponging, but you see this overlay of white circles there. And this technique is called Boca, B-O-K-E-H. You see that a lot in photography where you see an image up close and in the background it's kind of muted and fuzzy. At Christmas time it really looks pretty with Christmas lights on a tree. So we're going to be doing that on this card. I picked three pastel type colors I thought looked pretty together. I looked at some pictures of seahorses and I saw a lot of yellow and a lot of orangish colored ones. So I went with the yellow, the Daffodil Delight, some Highland Heather, and some Coastal Cabana. So we're going to set this aside. All of the measurements, descriptions, colors that I use on this card will be in the YouTube description right underneath the video. You'll find all the links to the products if you would like to shop with me. If you need um, Further instructions, you can go to my blog, cindyleebdesigns.com. At the end of the YouTube description, there's a visit my blog here. Press that link. You'll go to my blog post for this card. You'll see additional photos and any other little tips and tricks I want to type out for you to read. So we're going to be using Coastal Cabana, and this is a half sheet of cardstock. It's 11 inches by four and a quarter, and I scored it at five and a half, and then I'm just going to make it into a portrait size card. Now I'm gonna put the inside layer of Whisper White, and it's gonna be four by five and a quarter, and the outside Highland Heather that I bordered the card with pulling this color out, it's also four by five and a quarter. And then we're going to layer on top of that our white that we're gonna sponge on, and that's three and three quarters by five. And then our um, banner that goes across here that's in Highland Heather and Whisper White, it's going to be one inch by three and three quarters and one and a quarter for the Highland Heather by three and three quarters. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is get a little messy. So I'm going to bring out a piece of scratch here and we're going to set, I'm going to set our card so that we can see it here and maybe we'll just set this this way. And then I'm gonna bring out our white that we're gonna be using. I'll set this aside, okay. And I did see that I had some adhesive on here. So I actually am gonna turn this over, but I'm gonna make sure all my sides, did you ever get like a little bit of, when you're on your paper trimmer, a little bit of a curl on there? So I just flatten it out. You could use your bone folder. But what we're gonna do is be using those makeup brushes, those oval makeup brushes. You just look up on, online, Amazon, someplace, Walmart, go just get your oval makeup brushes. They're very soft and they do a nice, soft, subtle sponging. So we're going to use Coastal Cabana and we're just going to get some ink onto our oval brush. Now I want to stick my card up here and I'm just going to start a little bit off of the paper and then bring the color onto the paper. I'll apologize in advance if there's any shaking of the table. And the thing with sponging, the thing I like about this is when I use a, a the round type of sponges, I sometimes get a little bit too much ink on them, but these oval brushes are so subtle. And the more ink you get onto your paper, the better it moves on the paper. So when you first just start, keep adding your layers and the, it gets easier and easier as you as you sponge on there with these makeup brushes. And you'll see I'm getting a nice look with that Coastal Cabana. And it's your preference how much you wanna do, but it's a nice subtle card, so you can um, do it as light as you want or as dark as you want. So then I'm going, and these are very easy to clean off. Look at this, it bare, the ink just comes right off of there. So now I'm gonna set aside my Coastal Cabana, close that up, and I'm going to go, and I technically could use my same brush because it's essentially clean, but I just put out three of them too. So I'm gonna be using my Highland Heather, get some ink on there, kind of bring it off, and then start bringing it onto my paper. And I'm just making my second layer of ink here. 
I know some people who are really, really good at sponging. It's never really been my greatest talent in card making. But the more I do it, and the more I don't try to be, be too critical of myself and just go with it, the better it is. Okay, so there we've got our layer of Highland Heather. And I actually might put a little, I think this has a little more subtlety to these colors. It's a little lighter than I did on my first card, but we're gonna see how that turns out. So we're gonna set our Highland Heather aside and bring in our Daffodil Delight to finish off the top of the card. And we're gonna get some ink on there and bring it on here and do that at the top of my card. And once you get this nice background on here, any places that you're thinking you have an imperfection, it's all gonna go away once we start doing the next step. So there we go, you can use any color. If you wanted to, you could have um, did a really dark color down here and then lightened it up as you went. So you would have kind of an ombre effect with the same color, depending on you know what you wanna play with. I was trying to get a couple different colors into the card. Now the next step I did is I took a piece of acetate. Now I didn't clean off my acetate just so I could show you and it would show up better on the, film, on, on the uh, video, but I just took different sizes of circle dies from my layering circles and I just cut them out of a piece of acetate. Okay, so then I am now going to place it down. Now you can see, you can still see the white ink that's on here, but I wanted you to be able to kind of see what I'm doing here. So you're just gonna lay it on top of your card. You're gonna get one of your sponge daubers out and you're going to use your Craft Stampin' Pad Whisper White. It's a pigment ink and mine is messy. I don't know. This got messy somehow and whoo, it's messy, but that's okay. I want some ink on there and I'm just gonna get some ink on my sponge dauber. And then what I'm gonna do is make sure I keep my template in place and I'm gonna keep a nice tight rain on it. And then I'm just going to take that white sponge, um, spongy part of my dauber, and I'm going to start coloring in with the white ink those circles being careful to keep that template down because you don't want it to move now you can see I've got those three done I'm gonna fill in here keeping a good tight rain on that and you just fill in got one down here And then one big circle down at this side. And you're just giving a nice muted look with these circles. Okay, so now I have all my circles done and I'm going to pull up my template and you can see those white circles that have been made. Now you're gonna want the, it doesn't take a long time for this to dry, but you wanna give yourself a little longer than I can in the video. So I actually did one ahead of time that's dry. So now the next thing you're gonna do is after it's dried, you're going to take that same template and make sure you're not putting down the part that you put the ink on. Make sure if you want to, you could just write on here, you know, top or whatever. Then you're just gonna put it down and you're gonna to try to layer it so that some of the circles overlap each other. And at some point, like see this one is covering this one completely. So you could just say, okay, you know what? I want to do one right here. Okay, sometimes you can get lucky and it layers over nicely, but there I've got one there and I'm gonna do this one here. So it's just one template that does the trick, but you might have to move it around whenever you're doing the second layer. And then I'm not gonna do this one, cause it's, well no, we can, because it, if we cover up that little piece there, it'll just make it a different, um, it, may, it totally did cover up, but sometimes it'll just make a, a different layering. Okay, so then we need to get one in here, right in the middle here. So, 
you know, this will be different on every card you do, unless you put it right exactly in the place that you want it. And that one came out a little darker, but that's okay. It's the nice effect of the, um, let's put, let's see here. I'm looking here saying, where do I want another? I do want one down here, but I don't want the same size. So I think, I think I'm just gonna put one right there. So you get to be a little creative there. Oh, now see, I, it slid on me a little bit. And then that's where you just come back with that circle, get it back in place, and fill in there, that corner. And looks like I have a couple here and there. I, I might stick one little one down here. Make sure that stays flat. There we go. So I think I have a, a, a good mix of layering there. And then I'm gonna just put my white away. And those white ink pads come, I'm gonna actually wipe off my fingers here. Those white ink pads come uninked when you order them from Stamping Up, so you get a blank. I'm just trying to get a thing here to wipe off my fingers. Um, it comes with a blank ink pad, and then you just fill it up with the ink refill. Okay, I think they used to come already inked up, and I think it got a little messy. So now we're just gonna take this panel there. I'm gonna put away my scratch, save it for something else, and then we're just gonna take a real quick look at our card here. Now I use the seahorse in the shell. This shell here, the conch, I think, is that like a conch shell or a snail? A snail. Um, and I just pulled out, let's set this aside a second here just to dry a little bit. And my little seahorse is right here. And you can fussy, there aren't dies to go with this, so you can just fussy cut around them. Or if you have a uh, die cutting machine that you can, uh, you know, um, I'm gonna bring this in here too, so you can see a little bit. Uh, if you have one of those, like a scanning machine that can cut it, I actually did that with the seahorse because he's a little intricate here. So I'm gonna use my light, Daffodil Delight, and I'm going to fill in my seahorse. I'm just gonna go around the edges. That's what I like to do. Just make sure I get my edges. And then I'm just gonna color in his little, his tail. There we go. And then his little belly. Then I like to turn my image when I'm coloring it so I have more control because it seems I, if I, if I try to do it this way, I end up going out of the lines. Okay, now that I have my outline, then I come back in here with a little more confidence to fill in my... And I don't mind that if I miss a little bit of white um, because it has a nice effect with the white of the craft uh, white ink. And then I took the Daffodil Delight, the darker one, and I just came in on some of these ridges on the seahorse and I just gave it a little bit of dimension there. Just put a little here and there. There we go, and I did his nose, his snout, in the darker color. And then you know these white color lifters. If you end up with a place um, like right here, I see a little bit here, and I see a little here where I went over. If you just go over that, do you see how it lifted up that color? Now sometimes if a darker color, you'll, you'll write, well, write, you'll go over that space, let it dry, even sometimes overnight, and you can come back and lift a little bit more color, but that's really nice to be able to get off the little pieces that you kind of went under the, over the line out of the lines <laughs> and then we're going to also color in our snail shell and I just used the light Highland Heather for that and I like the way 
the ink sponged on there nicely with the Highland Heather and it matches pretty well. Okay, so we've got our shell and now we just simply put together the card. Now, one thing about this is it probably is still a little wet since we just did it, which would have been a good idea had I, now of course, you know, Cindy's not gonna let that, that be, um, oh, I think I'm gonna use this label here. I'm just gonna cut out a couple, I'm gonna punch out a few tags here with this, label me pretty, I think it is called. I'm just gonna cut those out because why waste that purple paper, that Highland Heather paper, when we're just gonna cover it up? So what I'm gonna do, since this is wet, is I'm gonna put my adhesive on, I usually don't do it this way, I put it on the back of this, but I don't want to play around too much with that white ink, because I don't wanna smear it. But normally, you would let that, actually, I'm gonna do it this way because I just saw I got a little bit of white ink on there. So we're gonna layer this onto the front of your card. And isn't that nice how the purple plays off that Coastal Cabana? Okay. And then I'm gonna put that adhesive onto the Highland of the Heather. When I was making this card, I wanted to do my one of my signature moves and flip the colors around. But I noticed when I put the Coastal Cabana against Coastal Cabana, even though the border and then I put purple there, it just didn't make as much of a dramatic effect as separating the Coastal Cabana with the Highland Heather. So now we're going to put our pretty bokeh sponged panel on top of our Highland Heather. And like I said, you wanna let this, you can either heat set it with your embossing gun or you can let it dry a little longer than we are here. So I'm being really a little bit, um, you know, careful with that. So then I have the label, or the sentiment actually, that's the, gonna go across there. And I just used a banner of Highland Heather. And then I used the Coastal Cabana ink for the Thinking of You. I love the set having the happy birthday, gratitude, and thinking of you. So. Once again, it's a multi-purpose all occasion. So I'm going to just get my sentiment, or as my friend Robin calls it, the slogan. <laughs> Haven't used that one for a while yet, Robin. So we're gonna put that sentiment on there. And then I always cut this just a tad bigger in case I cut it too small. And I'm going to find my paper snips, which were right here. And I'm just going to trim off that little edge there. Better to have and not need than need and not have. So there we go. And that looks nice and crooked. So we are going to pull this up and make it a little straighter. There we go. That was the angle I was at. And we're gonna put that across the card. Not totally in the middle. You could put it in the middle if you want to, but I put it kind of right a little bit lower than the middle. And then we've got the sentiment on there. And then we're just going to pop, we're going to put our shell flat. We're going to put, I need a little more adhesive under here. There we go. And then we're gonna put our shell flat against there, and then we're gonna pop up the seahorse. So let's grab some dimensionals here. I'm gonna put a big one on his head, big one on his belly, and then we're gonna take and put a little skinny one on his tail. And I'm just gonna cut off a little bit of this here and just kind of bring it around. I don't know if you guys can hear that thunder there, but it is really storming today. Big thunder. That's why Lucy's down at my feet. <laughs> then we're gonna put the 
little yellow seahorse so we can see a little purple from the shell and we could put our seahorse on there and then I thought we need a little bit of jazz on this card and what I did is I pulled out those glitter enamel dots that came in Granny Apple Green, Coastal Cabana, Melon Mambo, and Gorgeous Grape. And guys, they are retiring, but none of the colors are retiring. So if you have not grabbed some of these, because they will be very useful because the colors are still around. So it is a great way to just jazz up your card with the, that's why I chose that, um, and you know what? I think I need a little one. So I'm going to grab another pack that I have here. And yes, I did stock up and grab a couple of these on my last order. So I'm gonna pull this out here. As you can see, you get a lot of, you get a lot of these in there. And when something is, you know, when our, we always have beautiful new embellishments, and boy, we do have some elegant dots that are coming out, and oh, a lot of beautiful new embellishments. But whenever an embellishment really seems to work, and it matches colors that are staying, it's great to pick them up before they're retired. So there we go, glitter enamel dots. So we're gonna pop those away. So I can use them another day. And so we've got um, that little bit of glitter. It just kind of goes with the style of the card. And on the inside, I just simply stamped, and I put it over here. We're just gonna stamp this other seashell. Just did it in black. Now I want it to be like, let's see here. I want it to be like that. Stamping a memento black because I'm gonna color it in with my blends. And I just used my light one first. And I just went around here. And I actually should have let my ink dry just a second. Sometimes I find that if I don't just give it one second to dry, sometimes it'll pull a little bit of the black, like right here it did, but I actually just stamped it and went right to town on that. That was crazy. So I did a light color, and then I came back in, and then if you think you got anything on it, just stretch it, scratch it across your paper and you'll get any ink off. So then I just came back in with the darker one, and I just made some accents on the, the shell or the, different lines are. Just give it a little bit of depth there. Then flip it over, put a little adhesive in the corners, and then put it on the inside of the card. And remember again, that's four by five and a quarter. It gives a one eighth inch border the whole way around your card. A pretty much a a typical measurement. So there you go. You have the inside that shows these colors and inside you have your yellow and your coastal cabana showing. You could also put in, there's a pretty little bubbly, maybe that's like a sand, probably sand. Yeah, it probably is sand. You could put some little purple in there, but if I try to do that now, I'm going to mess up my card. So very simple card using the seaside notions. This is a great stamp set to be bringing out for the summer. And you can do this bokeh effect all we did was sponge onto our Whisper White. Whisper White is the perfect paper to sponge on. It's got a silky smooth surface and when you're, it really carries the ink. The more ink you sponge on, the easier it flows onto the card. So I did three different colors and then I just made a template with a piece of acetate or anything that's kind of like, you know, the inside of a packaging of something you have. And I just cut out some circles with my dies. You can do different layers different sizes, smaller, bigger, and then I laid it on top and I used my, my dauber into my white ink and I colored in the circles on my card. Once it was dry, I put it back down again and overlapped a few of them and anywhere I thought I needed one, I just put it back on there and filled in the circles and I get that really neat 
bokeh effect. So if you want to, look this up. Google that. Look at cards with the bokeh technique. Um, so many fun ways. And there are other ways other than sponging to do this. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me at cindyleeb at gmail.com. You could also call or text me at 724-323-2296. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and press the bell so that you will get notified whenever I post, usually on a Wednesday. I'll be starting in June to do perhaps a YouTube live on Tuesdays. One Tuesday out of the month, I'll be doing a YouTube live and focusing on a certain stamp set. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm planning to do that in June. So I'll make sure on my blog post and my previous YouTube videos to remind you of that so you can tune in if you are available at that time. That would be great. So thanks for buzzing by, friends.